So now in this next video, we're going to continue our discussion on body plans. So we'll entitle it Body Plans 2. Now again, we're looking at morphological and developmental traits that are key evolutionary steps in the development uh, of the body that an animal possesses. And that body is complex. It's unique for several different reasons that we covered in the first body plans video. Now we'll complete that discussion by looking at the two other parts of the body plan that you need to understand in an animal. Now, another part of developmental trait that's important is embryonic tissue development. So ET... DEV for embryonic tissue development is equal to, um, uh, I want you to know one thing about this, is that in this developmental process, the embryos of all eumetazoa become layered. So let me write this down. Embryos of all, all eumetazoa, so anything that has true tissues and organs eventually, embryos of all eumetazoa become layered. And this is important right now. This is going to be important later on as well when we go further into the development uh, of animals um, for a couple of different reasons that we'll highlight. So what we need to understand about these embryonic layers, this, these layers that are developing in eumetazoa is the following. These are otherwise known as germ layers. Okay, That's our technical term for the layers. And germ layers are just equal to concentric, meaning they go together with one another, concentric layers of embryonic tissue, ET for embryonic tissue. So in the development of embryonic tissue, we're going to have germ layers form. And these germ layers are the following. We actually covered them briefly in the terms section of our uh, first flowchart or second flowchart. So, in order to understand germ layers, we have to understand what the germ layers are. One of them is the ectoderm. We'll go outside first. Ecto referring to the outside, right? And this is simply the outer layer, the outer embryonic tissue layer. So we'll get that out of the way. In addition, we also have an endoderm. So we'll write that down over here. Our endoderm. And this is an embryonic inner layer. So we'll write inner layer. Okay, uh, endo for inner, ecto for outer. And finally, a new one for us actually is the mesoderm. And meso is going to actually refer to middle, and this is going to be the middle layer. Okay, now always ask yourself, what layer? What is, what is this layer even referring to? It's referring to embryonic tissue that is the result of a body plan that animals have. And this body plan that animals have is due to gastrulation. It's due to embryonic development, okay? So let's talk a little bit further about this. What's the purpose of knowing about the ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm? Why do you need to know that? Well, that's because the ectoderm eventually, this is when you were just a small embryo, couple of cells, 8 to 12 cells. You were an ectoderm, you had an ectoderm, and that eventually is going to give rise, and it does gi it gives rise to the outer covering of an animal. Outer covering. A.K.A. the reason why you don't walk around and have your blood spewing out uh, of your body, right? Your blood is, blood is contained, and it's contained because you have a skin layer. That outer layer that is you, that outer covering that you have is due to the ectoderm that first developed, that first germ layer, that outer germ layer that you have. In addition, this ectoderm also eventually gives rise to something you should also be very, very thankful for. This gives rise to uh, a sum of the nervous system. So not all of it, but some of the nervous system is due to ectoderm development through the embryonic stages. Okay, so going from an embryo to a fetus all the way to an infant, you start off as an embryo, and that embryo has an ectoderm. That ectoderm eventually, in the fetus stage and then the infant stage, will have an outer covering and a nervous system thanks to the initial ectoderm development. Now, the endoderm, the inner, it's the inner layer. This is what lines the archenteron, if we remember the archenteron, that opening, that pouch opening. So archenteron. I just want to write this in smaller letters because I have to save some space for the bottom. So this lines the arc enteron. I just put arc dash enteron if you can't read that. And what does this give rise to? This gives rise 
So it eventually develops into the following, gives rise to the digestive tract lining and organs of the digestive tract. So the digestive tract lining, so basically everything that has to do with digestion, big part of being an animal, right? Ingestion and digestion. So it must be important to develop a strong and well-developed endoderm, and it does happen. It gives rise to digestive tract lining plus um, some of the digestive tract organs associated with digestion. Okay, so that's our endoderm story. What about the mesoderm? This is the middle layer. Um, basic thing you have to understand about the mesoderm, this gives rise to most other body structures. Gives rise to most other body structures. So unless a question specifically asks about the digestive tract lining, about the archenteron, about the outer covering, or about the nervous system, it is asking about the mesoderm, okay? The mesoderm is most other body structures. So that covers our germ layers. Now, the thing to differentiate and distinguish between animals, this evolutionary step, is the lack of uh, a third germ layer or the fact that you have three germ layers. What do I mean by this? There are two classes of germ, let's say, layered organisms. There are diploblastic, let me rewrite that, diploblastic organisms. So those who have two germ layers versus their counterparts, which are known as triploblastic organisms. And triploblastic organisms are going to develop all three layers. So DEV for develop all three layers, thus the name triploblastic. And then diploblastic organisms will develop only the ectoderm and endoderm. Develop only endo plus ecto. And that would tell you that triploblastic organisms are probably more complex because they have more layers, they have a mesoderm, thus they have more complex body structures eventually after their embryonic development as compared to diploblastic organisms. What are body plans? Body plans are animal comparative points. Key evolutionary step here, either you have two germ layers or you have three germ layers. If you have three germ layers, you have an ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, you have everything that it gives rise to. And if you have two, you only have the endo and the ectoderm. So that covers our embryonic tissue development. Um, we'll conclude body plans two in the next video by looking at the idea of body cavities and how they play a role in body plans.